Welcome to this unsit project video where I'm going to show you how to set up your standing desk and also how to use it with a good posture. We're going to look at three main points in this video, keeping it simple, easy to remember. Height of the desk, height of the screen, and what is a good standing posture. It's very possible when going from sitting to standing to actually continue the damage. Right? A lot of the bad habits that we develop from our sitting lifestyle, a lot of the postural changes that we accumulate over time from sitting uh, are stubborn. And just by moving to, sit to standing doesn't mean that that's all going to go away. We actually carry those tendencies with us into everything that we do because sitting is the dominant activity. So it becomes the dominant driver of how we do things. So it needs a bit of awareness and it needs a bit of intention to actually do this properly. When it comes to the height of the desk and how we want to set that, I'm generally looking for a nice horizontal angle or a horizontal direction of my forearm, right? Parallel to the ground. So as I approach my desk, that's a really good height, comfortable height for me to be using my keyboard and mouse, right? And now point number two with the screen height, it's quite connected. My desk is at an optimal position for me to do work with my hands, right? But my screen is now at an optimal height for me to do work with my eyes, right? Because that's going to affect the, the shape that I put my spine in. So what I've had to do because my primary computer is a laptop, I've had to separate my screen and my keyboard and mouse. This is one option. I've got a separate keyboard and mouse or trackpad, and then I've elevated my, my laptop nice and high so that I can really get my screen as close to eye level as possible. I, I would even prefer to have this slightly higher so that I'm looking dead straight at the middle of my screen. Okay, so if you, another option is to keep your laptop on the desk and use the keyboard and trackpad of your laptop, but then have a second monitor set up, right? So <clears throat> you've got to decide what works best for you, right? You've got to see maybe what's most cost effective, or maybe you just have a second screen at, uh, in, your, in your house that you can use to get the setup proper. It's very important not to skimp. Having a slightly higher screen is not the same as having a screen that's high enough. Right? We really want to be looking straight ahead as, as much as possible. Right? Looking even slightly down, getting that head just slightly forward tilted. Right? Not only is that immediately putting a lot of work, a lot of load into all the, the muscles that support our neck and head because of how heavy the head is. Now, when you do that for hours and hours and hours, not only is that already a lot of work, Right? But because of how the whole spine from skull to coccyx operates as one unit, right? you just do that at the top, you're going to find a lot of that following afterwards. Whether it's minutes or hours later, to fight a slouch is much tougher. So you want, actually want to use your screen so that you're looking straight ahead and it's inviting you to be more upright. It's really asking you to have your head in that upright position so that you can easily look straight ahead. Now looking at posture, right, remembering that we've set this all up as best we can for the purpose of having a good posture, right. This is, this becomes meaningless, having a standing desk, having an optimized uh, computer setup, if we're not then translating that into a good posture. Right, that's the purpose. What are we actually doing with our body and what effects are we accumulating over time that are changing the way our body adapts, making us more susceptible to pain or injury or developing good habits, developing stability and awareness. Right, so this is really the crux of it. And when I'm, when I'm thinking about posture, especially standing posture, we're going to start at the feet, move to the hips, think about our spine, shoulders and then neck and head. So starting at our feet, right, think about symmetry and balance. I really, whatever's happening with my one foot must happen with the other. We want that kind of symmetry and balance in everything we do with our feet when we're standing. Of course, the standing setup is going to invite us to move a lot, but whenever you become aware that you're standing, 
you need to make sure that you are balancing the weight of your body over both feet equally. We want to make sure that the weight is balanced from the back to the front. We're using the front of our feet as well, not just resting dead on our heels at the back of our feet. And then we also want to be using a little bit of the inside of our feet as well as the outside of our feet. So a whole foot surface area is serving us to distribute the pressure of our body over the whole area. For a lot of us, the major shift that needs to happen because we've developed such lazy habits in our whole body, but especially in our feet and our legs, in because you've got to remember that when we're sitting, we're not doing anything with our feet and our legs. No load, no activity, no control, nothing. And we've spent tens of thousands of hours, if not a hundred thousand hours or more, doing nothing. So the bad habit really does become to rest dead on the bones, right? Rest dead on the heel. Wait for our knee to catch the weight, maybe our hip in some point, right? Whereas as soon as you... As soon as you do what I say and you put a little bit more pressure on the front of your feet, that's naturally going to ask a bit more of your calf muscle. It's naturally going to create a bit more tension and ask for a bit more support. Because there's no ways you can do that without engaging your calves a bit more. So it's definitely a more active posture. When we're thinking about positioning our feet, we want to think about, first of all, are they pointing in the same direction? Or, you know, symmetrically, right? We don't want them to be dead straight. That's not natural either. But we definitely don't want them to be pointing out. And we don't want to have one out. What we want to think about is just a comfortable, fairly straight pointing position. And the same on the one side as the other. Moving on to our hips, right? Once again, if we want to have a nice, stacked, balanced and supported posture. We generally want to have support on all sides of our joints. We don't want to be hanging across the muscles of the front of our joint, of our hips and just relaxing with nothing happening in the back, right? If we were neutral, if we were stacked in alignment and we were supported, we would have activity on both sides of, these, of, the, of the joint. So when we think about our hips, we want to think about a little bit more glutes. For most people, it's not enough happening here. We've, we've sat on them a lot. We've become very tight in the front. And so when you think about, are my hips doing the right thing? You want to think about, can I do a little bit more with my glutes? Right? And that's not a maximum contraction, a full effort. Right? It's that feeling of squeezing your glutes like you're holding a card in between your bum cheeks. Right? And initially you might not have much control over this. You might have on or off. Right? But as your skill, as your coordination grows, you'll find you can just switch them on at 10%, 20%. And for something as low demand is a standing posture. You really don't need more than that. One or two out of ten effort, tension. But it, it mustn't be off. It needs to be alive. It needs to be contributing. So we've looked at our feet. We've looked at our hips. We're working up from the ground. Next, the spine, the core, our trunk. Right? Once again, it's about having this balanced coherent support of our spine connecting our upper body to our lower body right our abs our core actually wraps like a weightlifter's belt all the way around all the way to our spine right and if we're doing it right we when we've got skill and coordination we can actually activate that whole belt with just maybe 10 percent effort 15% effort, 1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, not much, we don't need much, we're just standing and especially if we're in alignment, we're stacked and supporting our own weight. But what we can't have is nothing, no activity, no contribution. For me, that looks something like that. All of these uh, muscles in my abdominal wall just switch off, my back hyperextends and I get into this lazy posture, not acceptable. Start at the bottom, how are my feet, how are my hips and glutes, 
and just a little bit. What you can do to test is push your thumbs into your abdominal wall and see if you can push them out by flexing your abs. Obviously at the front for most people is quite easy. We're familiar with those six pack abs. But the obliques on the side are a lot harder to activate. And like I've just mentioned, we want the whole wall to act as one integrated support structure. Because that's how it, 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 it works best. So you can even put your thumbs into the side here and try and push them out. Initially you can only do that possibly with maximum effort. But as your skill and coordination grows, you want to get to the point where you know even here where it's tough to activate. That you can just put 10% on, you know, there's 10% on here and there you are. Stacked, supported, balanced. So we've looked. Feet, hips, core and spine. Core supporting our spine. Next we need to look at our shoulders. Once again, this is where we've spent most of our time. Rounded shoulders, reaching forward, right? Neck under a lot of strain. Right. What we want to do, the neutral standing posture is definitely a little bit more back than that. We call it retracting the shoulder blades. Right? And it's actually a more externally rotated position. So, the best way to get into this posture, and this is thanks to Kelly Starrett. What you want to do is stand in this posture, check that the rest of you is set up correctly. Right? You want to then just Position your palms facing forward, right? You'll feel just by doing that, that there's a natural correction of your shoulder posture, right? Now, trying your best to not let your shoulders change position. Just bring your hands in and up to this working position while keeping your shoulders in the same posture. That's what we're aiming for. Now, this is not going to happen. You're not just going to do this once and your body's going to listen. There's a lot of training to be done before any of this becomes obedient and reliable. You're going to have to do it thousands of times, upon thousands of times. But there is no alternative. So you're going to have to go through the sequence over and over again. How are my feet? How are my hips and glutes? How's my core and spine? Let's set up the shoulders, palms facing forward. Keep the shoulders there, get into a working posture. Done. Now... Last but not least, of course, head and neck. And we've already taken care of a lot of that with the way we've set up our station. We want to avoid head slouching, rounding, hanging forward. And we want to use the position of our screen looking straight ahead to invite us to a more upright posture, to invite our spine into that upright neutral position. And that's taken care of with the correct setup of our screen so you can't cut corners there so just to recap we set up our desk at a height that allows our forearm to be horizontal we want our screen inviting our eyes and our head to look straight forward then we think of our posture good feet position how are they pointing how are we distributing our weight over them? And are they always symmetrical if we're in a neutral standing posture? Next, what's happening at our hips? Am I inviting those glutes? Am I activating them slightly to give my hips not only support, but it actually brings them into a good position? Then, am I using my core just enough to support my spine and to connect my whole body, my upper body to my lower body? and to bring structure to the system. Then, shoulders. Let's practice what that feels like to set the shoulders and then get into a working pattern. Lastly, position of our head, constantly checking, looking straight ahead, dependent largely on our setup of our screen. So don't cut yourself short with that. So, if you're using a desk station, make sure to implement all of these changes. And if you know anyone that is using a desk station, please make sure they see this because they clearly want to do things better. But we just need to make sure that they're, that they're getting 
all of the benefits they can from putting this work in, from taking action to unsit their bodies. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video.